In this video, we're looking at the Erica Synths Pico DSP. There's something about sound that articulates the. There's something about sound that articulates the. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness. So the Pico DSP is a really small footprint in your rack and it's going to give you a ton of amazing flexibility and options. It has eight digital effects on it and you basically click through those effects by going through these colors here. So uh, you see I just ran through all of them and off is actually one of the uh, options as well. But um, really simple to navigate. You've got a dry wet knob here and you've got parameter one and you've got parameter two. You have CV control over parameter one, you've got your input audio signal, and then stereo output. So really nice that in such a small unit, you get stereo out. All right, so before I dive into the actual parameters and showing you demos of those, I just want to say that what I think is awesome is that the it's, it's such a simple control, and it's so easy to just get the parameters here. But I will say I often, even with the fact that there's only eight effects, I forget, you know, which effect is which parameter. And so I kind of then have to often, you know, just kind of fiddle around with it and try to listen for what's happening there. But um, they do make, it's like their manuals, that's what I love, Mer Erica, since manuals are like three pages long and it's just one page, it's just like colors, parameters, and it's just a table. So you could very well make a chart of this. I'll put this on screen during the video, but um, that's probably the only thing I just find that I forget it, but at least it's not menu diving or anything like that. It is about as basic as you can get. And like I said, audibly, you can pretty well figure out the parameters pretty quickly. And I kind of I basically memorized my favorite effects to use for my type of music and stuff as well. So I uh, love the setup and the design of it. All right, so we're going to start going through effects here. And basically, I'm going to have this vocal track kind of going in the background. And um, it's going to be looping. And I find the vocals are really great to just hear the what is exactly is happening with an effect um, versus an instrument or something. So we're going to play through vocal. And uh, I'm going to go through each of these effects. First, this is the dry signal. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. And then I'm going to put these things to really around 100% to start here, just so you can hear. So first, we're going to try the just off switch, which is black, which uh, is basically a mono delay where your top one is your delay time and your second one is your feedback. So I'm going to start looping our vocal here. And it's 100% wet. That articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about the sound feedback that articulates the openness and ungovernability and delay time. Experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound. Pretty amazing there, but now let's add some CV into that. We're now going to modulate the delay time. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and the ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. Next, we're going to look at white, which is a pitch shift delay where the top knob is your pitch and the second knob is your delay time. So again, the free previous one, knob one was delay time. So those are kind of some things that I find like hard to remember, but uh, again, you can kind of quickly just play around and you can actually normally just hear it as well. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability. Someone mess with that pitch. Experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability. Pretty amazing effect right there. Like that's pretty wild. I like that. Ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. All right, next we're going to look at is yellow, which is a stereo delay where your top one is delay time and your second knob is feedback. So this is similar to black, where the top is just delay time and the bottom is feedback. Definitely pretty heavy stereo effect there. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. 
There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. So again, pretty great effect there. Let's add some CV into there, and we'll hear that CV going into the delay time. There's something about sound, sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. Next, we're going to look at green, which is a granular delay where the top knob is feedback. And when you put that to full CV, it's going to turn into a freeze mode on the new grains coming in. And then the second one is delay time, which is just going to basically the, the delays of that granular. There we go. There's that freeze at 100%. So that's pretty cool to, uh, you can kind of modulate that. Let's turn that on at times. So let's actually go ahead and throw some random CV into that. Make that really short grains. That's pretty wild. Let's go super low, long and delay. <laughs> this is a Vogel. <laughs> that's wild. Okay. Yeah, this is oh, that's super cool when you get that that up in the freeze mode. You just you freeze a grain like that, and like you just got a cool sound coming through. Get a little bit of randomness so you can kind of start to just refreeze it every now and then. Well, that's pretty wild. I like that. Oh, we should also probably unfreeze it. <laughs> Turn it off. Next, we're going to look at light blue, which is a reverb. And your top knob is time, and the bottom knob is tone. There's something about sound that articulates the openness. I'll mess with the time. Make it really big. Then I can go super low reverb. High reverb. Small space high reverb. Or low reverb. So again, pretty simple effect there. Let's go ahead and modulate that first parameter. So it's kind of modulating the size, which kind of blends together. It's a little hard to make a distinct effect with that one, which is a little interesting, but still definitely something cool to control over the CV. All right, next we're going to look at the dark blue here, which is basically a saturated reverb. And um, you basically have your top knob is tone and your second knob is time. So literally it's kind of reversed from the other two and it's a different type of reverb effect. Some, uh, some very 40s sounding radio. We can change that tone. Make that much shorter. Or a radio broadcast from a, the Oval Office. Or... And then we'll put some CV into parameter one. They're just kind of randomly messing with the tone on that there. So you can probably do some really cool envelope stuff with that. To kind of like raise it, do uh, rises and falls and stuff there. That'd be pretty sweet. All right. Next mode we're looking at is pink, which is a Leslie cabinet. And the top is simply your speed and the bottom is a high pass filter. So let's check it out. There's something about sound 
that articulates the openness. Pretty cool effect you're getting there. Of experience. So we're just putting There's a filter. Sound that articulates the openness and, and you can mess with the speed of how fast it's spinning around your head. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool effect in terms of stereo. Like that's really nice actually. So um, yeah, put that stereo I'll put into your mix and like, that's kind of trippy. Um, and then, or, you know, I mean, that could you just get that in time with your music a bit there. So again, really cool thing. Something about sound that articulates the openness. So yeah, Leslie, then let's mess with the CV of that speed. I bet that's going to be weird. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. Mm. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and yeah, so it can get a little bit more randomness there, which is kind of switching between various speeds of spin. So pretty cool effect there. And ungovernability of experience. Final effect we're looking here is my favorite and probably my most used, which is the overdrive and slat and bit crusher. So basically your top is overdrive. And your bottom is uh, basically going to be a bit crusher. So if I turn all those all the way down, there's something about sound here. It's just subtly there, the but openness and ungovernability. There's that overdrive. Experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness. And, and you can also combine that with a bit crush of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and, and ungovernability. Yeah. And we can kind of mess of with experience. Modulate there's that. something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. There's something about sound that articulates the openness and ungovernability of experience. So really simple effect, but this thing just sounds amazing. You just put any synth line through it, you put your drums through it, and it just sounds awesome and dirty and industrial. So I love this. I mean, I have this thing in red almost all the time. <laughs> like I just, it's in almost every patch. It's some level put in some sort of distortion, even if it's subtle on something. Um, so that's probably my favorite way to use it. I definitely sometimes use the other effects as well. And this demo has made me want to use more of the other effects more, but I just love the distortion. Can't get enough of that one. That is the Erica Synths Pico DSP. Super small footprint, super powerful effects, great value for it. Um, it's make a great, adi great addition to your rack. And I promise if you put this in your rack, you're going to use it on every patch. Like you're just never going to be like, ah, I'm not going to run that thing through that extra effect that can give me that subtle little reverb or, or distortion or something like it's, you're just, you're going to use the hell out of this. So pick yourself up a Pico DSP. I think you'll be very happy that you did. And in this episode, I want to do a quick shout out to the Colorado Modular Synth Society. If you want to hang out with cool people that are just making real connections and just have one of the coolest play like chat rooms online to hang out in. Um, check it out. Like I'm literally in there a lot in just, you know, avoiding my actual work day, hanging out on discord. And there's a lot of other cool, really interesting people here. Uh, so definitely check it out. The Colorado modular synth society can't, uh, can't sing its praises enough.